Welcome to Kitco News. I'm Niels Christensen. Joining me today to talk about negative oil prices and the impact it's having on the economy and gold prices is Mike McGlone, Senior uh, Commodities Analyst at Bloomberg Intelligence. Thank you very much for joining us, Mike. Hey, Niels. Thanks for having me. Um, it's, it's excellent to talk. You, you know, hopefully you can, you can shed some light on negative oil prices. You can't even give this stuff away. Um, what, what impact does this have on investor sentiment? Does this, is this an indication that things are going to get worse before they get better? Yes, I think it is that. The first thing from a gold standpoint, it's fuel for higher gold because it gives fuel for central banks to ease more, which is really it's pumping, it's really like pushing up gold. But bottom line, it's it's part of the macroeconomic demand destruction situation we're seeing. It's recession, it's actually depression like. So oil's mm-hmm. plunging, futures are having issues because it's a tree in the forest, part of plunging bond yields of just this massive deflationary trend. The significance is. You know, we spoke about this a little while ago. Is coronavirus is just a, a catalyst. I mean, these trends were in place well before. I've been bullish on gold and bearish crude oil for quite a while, partly because the trends are unfavorable. Now they're just quite extreme. Um. So, okay, levels are extreme. The uh, gold oil ratio, um, record highs. You pointed that out in your research numerous times. Um, does it have room to go higher? I mean, I guess like you know, when when you're in these blue sky areas. Uh, how do you how do you determine you know sort of what momentum we have? Yeah, it does. Well, number one, remember the key driver is oil because it trades at a much higher volatility than gold. Gold is basically stable and it's like money. So I view gold as very much a lot of upside. It's unlimited upside essentially right now, as central banks said, they have unlimited ability to to really provide stimulus. And oil is basically anchored. You know, WTI crude oil is around fifteen barrels. You look at the next the next. Um, Month July is around 20. To me, it's really stabilized between 10 and 20. It's stuck. It's unlikely to get above 30, which was the old kind of low. So it's stuck. We don't expect to see demand to come on for a long time and maybe never the way we had it before. Yet supply is a problem. But we know what's happening with gold. It's priced in dollars and currencies that are this unlimited supply of those currencies, but gold has limited supply. So I see that trend and the ratio continuing to move higher, basically because gold's going to go up and oil stabilize. And what do you think uh, these oil prices have on um, just economic sentiment? I mean, you know, equities have seen a nice bounce. The S&P uh, 500 has seen a nice bounce uh, from the, the, the chaos in March. When I look at oil prices, I just, I can't, I think that optimism is misplaced. Um, am I wrong? No, I, I think that's the key thing. So I've been pointing out that gold, the, the spot value of gold has been outperforming the S&P 500 total return for at least five years. Since the Fed first tightened in 2015, that's just a bad sign for the stock market. Now, the stock market's being boosted by this massive amount of liquidity. But the question is how much longer that can last. And I think gold is just has the upper hand. Uh, partly also look at the big picture. Gold is still below its all-time highs. It's had a major period of disdain. It's had its shakeout and its reset. It's just getting back to a bull market. It's not even at a bull market yet. Just two months ago, that S&P 500 made all time new highs. And I suspect, suspect people are re- forgetting that in depressions and recessions, stock markets usually go down, even with Fed easing. It's just going to be a matter of time. In fact, we might just see a stock market that's going to be stable and flat or underperform for a long time. But gold should continue to outperform. Let's get right to it. I mean, where do you see gold prices uh, sort of end of year and and longer term? I mean, a lot of people are talking about um, record high prices. Uh, We had Bank of America come out yesterday saying $3,000 gold uh, in the next 18 months. Uh, How realistic is that? Yeah, well, I love Francisco Brock. He's one of my favorite analysts, and he picked 3,000. I like that. So you look at gold versus the S&P 500. The historical average is 1.1, meaning gold is usually 1.1 times higher. So S&P 500 is around 2,800. If that's flat, gold should at least get to near there, 3,000. In this environment, what better catalyst? And then it's just a matter of time. Now, remember, we're talking about gold and dollars. In terms of most other currencies, mm-hmm. it's made new highs. So I, my question, and still the same for the last few years, is what's going to take the whole gold lower? I don't know, but as far as how high it can go... It's supposed to get to a period where it gets stupid expensive, like the stock market did for a little while last few years. And right now, it's just in this meh, still retracing an old bull market with still retracement. So 
we're in the, I think we're going to be entering that next stage soon, probably this year, where that 1900 level is just looking like there's going to be a lot of buy stops above that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, last question I wanted to ask, uh, monetary policy. I mean, all of this, all of this is because um, Federal Reserve, central banks, ECB, everybody's pumping massive liquidity into the system. Um, wanted to ask, do you think the Federal Reserve goes negative? Do they need to go negative for gold prices to go higher? I think they could go negative, but they do not need to do that for gold prices to go higher. So let's point out, remember, gold has been rallying since they first started tightening in 2015. So that, to me, tells me in a strong dollar environment, that just means gold's going up and all the other currencies are going down. But gold, that stable store of value, has only one place to go up in terms of these you know, currencies with limit, unlimited supply. So the Federal Reserve should keep doing what they're doing. The bond market, the dollar is telling them they have unlimited ability to keep stimulating. And I think they should continue to do that because this is deflation. Look at crude oil. It's at the lowest level in who knows what, two or three, almost three decades. Inflation adjusted, that's purely deflation. So there's no risk of inflation. And until mm -hmm. there is, they're supposed to just print money because that's what inflation typically is. It's just too much money placing, facing, you know, chasing solid goods. And what do we know gold is? Gold is a <laughs> solid store of value. That's perfect. I just, I just want to end on the note that gold needs to get stupidly expensive. That's, <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe what's to come. I think that's a good way. So look at crude oil. It got basically stupidly cheap. I've been bearish and now it's like there's no way to be bearish crude oil anymore. You just sell rallies and you trade the range. But when you see something brewing like this for years, typically it takes a blow off top and we're nowhere near that. But we sure have a good fundamentals. Um, well, thank you very much for your insights, Mike. Uh, I hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much for watching Kiko News. For all your precious metals coverage, go to kiko.com. Stay safe and stay healthy. <laughs>